What's up guys, welcome back, big wags, we are back, it is T-minus one day till collection to go do some other things. Rex this morning has finished off our power steering lines, we're just waiting on one, there's one panel mount we still got to put on, which we don't have, which we'll order and it can go on when it comes back, but that's how the power steering lines yeah, look. Oh, just checking now, yep, got a speedo drive. Yeah, and there's your, there's your drive gear in the Beautiful, box as well. just wanted to double check that before it left as well. Um, so yeah, this is our power steering lines ended up looking really, really nice. See our little cooler on the low pressure side on the return. Mm -mm. So, power steering, fuel, looking good. So originally I had planned today to try and pull the dummy and the gearbox out to do what we wanted to do on the firewall. Uh, however, having a bit of a look around this morning, uh, we realized that we don't really actually have to pull it out, which is good. It saves us a fair bit of time. Because uh, it's obviously a dummy, I've only got two bolts in each head. Uh, to do what we want to do with the firewall on this side with that heater delete panel, we can just pull this head off and get at everything we need to get at. Um, so there's no, and we're able to get the sump off obviously without pulling the engine. So sump's off, it's over there. So um, yeah, that's going to be good. It's going to save us a bit of time. So we'll drop back down after we sort of what we want to sort out down here. And then we'll start looking at our firewall situation and what we can do as far as hopefully getting this AC system mounted in there. So Rogan is doing more fab work. He's doing a sheet metal dash. And the plan was to get him to integrate the AC system as far as the ducting and where 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 the owner wants to put all of his vents and everything else. And then there's uh, defrost or demister as well. So we'll get him to cut the vents for the demister into the dash the dash pad too. So I really wanted to have that mounted in the car, uh, at least sort of so that he could start working that into his dash design. Uh, but we'll have a look when we get it down and pull it out because to uh, to get the actual dash out because of the roll cage, it's a really big pain in the ass. Uh, I believe the front section of the roll cage is uh, it all unbolts, but it seems probably pretty counterproductive and stupid for us to spend all that time unbolting all that to get that dash out when Rogan's gonna have to pull all that out to do his dash anyway, so. We'll just have a look and see. Get it down, have a look, see what happens. Uh, but yeah, we'll get rid of everything on the firewall we don't need, we'll get rid of that wiper motor, it's going, we're gonna put a newer one on it. So the older ones like from the HJ and prior, They've got the integrated washer motor in the wiper motor and they are renowned for having issues. I assume it's probably some sort of leakage between the washer and the wiper that causes rust and stuff in there and kills the motors. I assume is the, the problem, which would make sense to me. So anyway, that's going to be going and we're gonna put a different, different type of wiper motor on it, which is gonna be more reliable. So we'll get rid of all that firewall. All right, boys and girls, this is pretty much where we're at. We've got that all nut soldered in. That's all good. We've removed most of the crap off the firewall that didn't need to be there. And the dummy engine's in there, ready to go with the accessories on it. Full exhaust is in. Ready to go to its next stop along the way. Had to make this little striker to protect the condenser from the bonnet latch, which is worth the charm. And we'll refine that when it comes back. But just in the meantime, we chuck that in there. So I had a starting, I started having a look at where our on dash AC kit was going to mount and I was right because of uh, where we want it to mount pretty much up under the dash it's it'd have to be a dash out job uh, which as I talked about as you can see with this roll cage not that simple and uh, for Rogan to make that dash he's gonna have to pull the front half of the roll cage out anyway so it just seemed like a complete waste of time for us to go through all that now um, so we're just gonna send the box with the kit with it Rogan can incorporate that into his dash I'd say he'd probably most likely incorporate the mounting solution into the dash as well it's it it would make the most sense to ask for it to be that way as well so we'll just let him sort that out so that'll go with the supercharger will go with because we need Rogan to make us a new intake because the intake that came with the kit bolts to the front of the head which obviously is not going to work with our alternator so our new intake has to come across over the top of the alternator into this corner so we'll take we'll send the supercharger with and the spacer Lower spaces that came with the interchiller kit. Apart from that, it's all dummy fitted back in as it sits, as you can see. Now I've left the external crank support on so that the people who build the radiator, because we don't have our mandrel yet for our dry sump drive, you know, at least they can sort of see that there is something that's gonna come out about an extra 30 mil from the blower drive. So the mandrel may even build like another 10 mil further forward than that. So I'll let them know, but at least that gives them something to work to. I figured I'd leave that on. Not only that, but it's holding this on at the moment, which yeah. I want to leave something here so that people don't look in and think that they've got all this room to work with because they don't they really don't so not as far as we wanted it to be not as far as long as we really anticipated it to be but considering uh the issues we faced and the time basically yeah the time we've lost the issues we faced um i'm pretty happy with it so we're sending the ic7 i'm also sending the can keypad and that there is the actual control panel for our ac system so that they can build that into the dash as well they can get mounted wherever 
where the where the owner wants everything so everything will be in the dash sort of ready to go then all we've got to do is wire it in happy days anyway that's the end of this for now i won't sign the video off now because there's definitely not enough stuff to be in a whole video but we'll pick this back up when it gets back here so see ya in the next frame when it gets back rightio boys and girls big blue wags is back and we've had some really nice work done some by some other really nice people as you can see we've got a radiator and thermos in there now uh, with our balancer and stuff dummied up in there. We do have a new mandrel, which came from Joe Blow Speed Shop to do what we want to do with our oil pump, which is awesome that that's here. There's new brake lines, brake booster, master, all the rest, bias adjuster. So all new brake lines, which look awesome. Unfortunately, one of our fuel lines got damaged in the process, but that's just what happens when cars go to different shops and move around. Uh, the Rogan Industries, who did all the fab work, all this beautiful fab work, he ended up actually moving the power steering pump out of where we had it to up in the inner guard where opposite to where I have the PD-16. So that's really nice and hidden. And it means there could just be a flat panel go over the fuel tank in the floor and didn't have to put any holes in it and everything, anything showing in there. So that worked out really, really well. It looks really good. He's also done a oil reservoir and a uh, coolant reservoir for our interchiller setup as well, which I'll show you when the car comes down, which is really, really nice now. As well as that, we've also got, oh, well, I suppose, not as well as that, but with the pump being here now, uh, as you can see, this is LS7 head set up. It's our springs that we're using, courtesy or thank you to uh, Warspeed Industries, as well as our timing pointer here. Uh, and then our comp rocker setup, shaft rockers. Really nice little head setup. Anyway, we've been doing some measurings and stuff there and getting them set up. I kept the heads and the rest of the motor off. I didn't want to put the rest of the motor together until I had something done for this oil pump mount. So the oil pump we've got in order for our solution to have the oil pump driven off the passenger side and not interfere with all our other stuff is a Barnes pump. So we've got our Barnes pump here. It is designed for a big block Chev. Uh, and lucky for us, I do have a big block Chev block right here in the back room. Rex's big block Chev block. So I've, managed, I've been able to get the information I needed off this to create the mount that I need to create. So I'm deep in the, I suppose, the design and production stage of that at the moment. I've got all the dimensions off the block that I want to use, the mounts. So yeah, 3D printer's going. Been a while since we had that fired up, but the reason I left it all apart until we get this sorted is because I didn't want this to affect where the timing pointer would end up, and then potentially I have to pull it all back apart or do something different, depending on how the mount goes. I particularly didn't want to put the heads on in case we did have to move the timing pointer, because obviously using top dead for the piston to get the timing pointer exactly right is the most accurate way to do it. Uh, and because we're using cross ring head gaskets, when these head goes, heads go on, we do not want to be having to pull them off. So that would suck. So I'm trying to get this oil pump mount sort of finished or finalized, or at least the design finalized before I put the engine all the way together, just to, to try and mitigate or limit, eliminate uh, any possible issues with it having to come apart again. Um, we've put our crank, sensor, crank, crank angle sensor in, the gap is down to 0.7 mil between 0.6 and 0.7, so that's perfect. So that's worked out great. So that's solved that issue. Uh, yeah, it was a pain to have to do all that. And after doing that, I really don't want to have to do it again for if something does have to happen. So anyway, V1 of the block mount is in the 3D printer. Just trying to get the, the mount surfaces correct before I go any further with the design. But if this works the way I wanted it to work, it should completely not use any of the timing cover, which means that our timing pointer and everything else should be safe to go on. Once I know that I can do it that way and I don't need to utilize any of those holes or anything like that, I'm happy to put the engine back together completely because I know I can put the timing corner on it, get that set right and it won't have to move. Uh, but until such a time, it's staying apart, save me having to redo work more than once. But yes, very nice, all very good. Yeehaw. And um, yeah, our Joe Blow Mandrel. So this is our new Mandrel, which will drive this pump from in front of the blower pulley. So yeah, all the happy days, hopefully. But just gotta make a mount to obviously go from the LS block to a Chev big block pattern for the pump. And then also stand that pump out far enough forward that it's gonna work with our mandrel in front of the blower drive. So that's what we're working with. Radio guys, we've got a prototype. Look at that. That's how it's gonna be. That's how it's looking. You can um, sort of clock this a little bit. Happy days. So that's basically prototype one. That's how it's looking, yeah. So far, pretty happy with it. The piece isn't super pretty, but uh, obviously the aim of the game is to get this thing done ASAP. Uh, time is a luxury we don't really have, so. Not only that, but 
as a solid piece of billet alloy, you know, the CNC process, you can only do so much. As much as you would like, could want to web it or do whatever you want to do to maybe remove some material and, and make it nicer, all you're doing is making it more complex to CNC. So the shape that it is with just some rounded edges will be a nice and quick one to in easy to CNC uh, and should hopefully not take very long. Uh, so obviously I'll test fit with timing cover and everything else, but by the looks of things, we should be fine as far as this not interfering with any of the other stuff that we need to do, which means that once I've got this design sorted out and good enough to CNC, I can freaking finally get this motor together, which would be great. It'd be awesome. Uh, so anyway, so next thing is to take this off this block go put it on the dummy block in the car, ensure that the pump clears the steering rack and all that other stuff, which I'm pretty sure it will, um, just from the way I've designed it. Anyway, we'll double check, make sure it clears all that, see how it looks with our standoff on our balancer and our uh, crank drive pulley. Uh, and then the next thing is to, I suppose, get the cam and stuff back in this thing, get a timing cover on it, and um, actually get the blower drive and stuff on this engine and just confirm our offsets are actually right and perfect with a crank because we may have to just adjust the the height of this and move it out or in we'll have to we'll have to see but anyway that's the basic piece obviously 3d design works very time consuming and taxing and that is what it is but hopefully if we can just have something uh, like today's thursday if i can have something ready at the cnc by monday i'll be stoked so that's what I'm hoping with. So here we have it fitted to the dummy in the car. Clearance is good. We've got clearance everywhere. Pretty much the bracket and the pump looks really good. Everything about it looks awesome. The alignment looks to be pretty good. I'll know more obviously once I have it on the engine with the actual balancer mounted on the crank properly. But one thing I have noticed is the six rib up to the alternator, as you can see, goes straight through our bracket. So what I am going to do is Remove this spacer from the top bolt. It can go on the third hole because we can't use it. And I'm going to have to put an idler basically in there. So got one here. Boom. That just fits inside the bracket of the pump like so. Just a little bit of room each side. So I just need to have these spaces shortened. Get someone with a lathe to shorten them up to the right length to uh, yeah use this in that top bolt hole. And the, the bolt will go obviously through the idler on the spaces uh, for the top hole and that will be the idler to run the belt up over and then up to the alternator so anyway now that i'm happy enough with the clearance in the car and as you can see it doesn't interfere with the timing cover or where the timing point is going to be at all so now that i'm happy with everything i will go ahead and start getting the motor back together and i'll get the alt uh the balancer and everything on the actual crank and get another just alignment measurement and that's the last thing I want to do is just confirm the alignment, make sure I don't have to extend this at all. And yeah, once the alignment's sorted, off to CNC it goes. So happy days. All right, guys. So it's actually been like four days now since that last clip you just watched and um, been trying to get to this point with this car for that whole time. Just trying to get to the point where all of us are just balls, balls to the wall into it to get it done because the deadline's fast approaching. Unfortunately, just life happens. <laughs> One of my idiot cats broke its leg. I get it. Got to get its leg amputated. Um, yeah, this is work commitments um, for this time of year as well. It's just been a absolute shit show, to be honest. Anyway, now we're moving on. We are finally at this point now. Um, unfortunately, I'm still going to be in and out because of dealing with what's going on, which sucks. And it, it means that probably next week now, uh, which is the start of school holidays, which means <laughs> things should hopefully settle down as far as um, dealing with with Mrs. Work Commitments, I'm gonna be doing some very big days, late nights on this thing to get this thing sorted by our deadline because it's fast approaching. Uh, we just talked about, last clip was uh, about our pump mount, which I haven't had a chance to test the offset any more than when I just did that clip before. So that sucks, but anyway, I'm trying to get there. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I was meant to get down to the machine shop and talk to him about CNCing it this week, which just hasn't happened because of everything that's been going on here. So anyway. This morning tested the water pump um, with the quarter inch spacers. So I bought the quarter inch spacers for the Mizio water pump, which we bought because it's got the idler pulley, which we need to complete our belt route so that we can run our accessory drive the way we are running our accessory drive because we are very committed to having uh, AC set up because of the interchiller. Um, and obviously we need not later. And it's gotta be high mount because of the dry sump and the dry sump's gotta be where it is because of all the other things. So it's like I talk about where one problem pushes into another you know the one solution to a problem pushes into a, another thing which becomes a problem for that and then it just it's a knock-on effect where everything's just a problem so 
We took a gamble on this water pump. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out. Uh, so I bought the quarter inch spaces at the small spaces that I could find, and I was hoping that it would work. And it does work as far as it does clear the crank support, which is what we needed them for. Unfortunately, though, it is too far, spacing the water pump too far, and there's no way that the belt will be on the pulley. The belt's going to be far too close to the water pump body. It's not going to catch the pulley. It's just not going to work. So we can't run it without the spacers because it hits crank support. We can't run it with the spacers because the belt's not going to work. So it sort of defeats the whole purpose. So that was a big old waste. So unfortunately, there is no other solution now except for, once again, complete bespoke custom 3D design. I cannot find anyone that does just a like a water pump idler for an LS period. It seems to just not be a thing. And um, because we are committed to our accessory drive, we need something there so basically my solution at this point is we can't run the regular Mazir electric water pump that bolts to the water pump provisions which is what most people according to Joe um, from Joe Blow was what most people would run with that crank support which makes sense unfortunately we can't run that because even though it could the crank support there is no idler on it and then it takes up all the room we have to actually put an idler somewhere so this morning I have been 3d designing a bracket which will bolt on with the crank support or the timing cover um, which will be a water pump idler and I'm gonna have to produce that and make that because no one else makes one and like I said we're committed to that so we'll have to run that to complete the belt route and then we're just gonna have to run the orb billet adapters for the LS for the water pump adapters, adapters for the block and we're just going to have to run like a, an external Bosch water pump or something and run a completely external water, water system um, which unfortunately means more lines uh, more fittings, more hose, more time, a lot more time with this 3D design. So it's got me stressing because um, it just takes so long to do this 3D design stuff. And the the, the deadline for this is really, it's it's fast approaching. So um, anyway, like I said, guys, it is what it is. That's custom work, 3D custom design work. It just is only so fast you can do it. There's no way to cut corners and and rush it. Um, I feel like we're getting pretty good at it as we go, but you know, that coupled with just life stuff that's been going on lately has just been, makes me want to smack my head against the concrete wall, but it is what it is. So this is what I've come up with at the moment, which I have in the printer. And I've got it printing just to the way it is, uh, to just ensure that it's going to work with what we want to do. Um, so that is essentially the piece and it stands off enough that it will clear the crank support or it should and it essentially just bolts to oh, these four spaces here so that just bolts to there and i just got that in the printer just to ensure that i've got all my measurements and critical dimensions correct and that it's going to bolt and clear the crank support and everything else and then once i know that obviously i'll start working on the actual standoff for the idler and cleaning it up and, and everything else so that's um as fast as I can make the process is get something like this in the printer as soon as you can. Try and print it as early as you can. Uh, and then once you've got that right, you can start moving on. Otherwise, you're not spending way too much time on the whole piece. You don't get it in the printer till later. It takes twice as long to print because it's way more complicated. And then you find out your critical dimensions were incorrect anyway. Uh, so like I said, I've, I feel like I'm about as good as this at this as I, I can be now uh, without wasting time. But it is just a freaking lengthy process and still got to get this pump bracket CNC'd and get this finished and CNC'd as well as obviously finish the rest of the car so anyway as you can see we've got everything back out like I said there was a VC there was some other cars here that we finally got rid of this week while all this other stuff's been going on and we're finally at a point where it's just all three of us just head down ass up let's get it uh, also when I'm prototyping like this I always print these with like hardly any infill again just um, they're light and they're weak as but it's only to test critical dimensions and it makes it faster to print so I've, um, yeah like I said I've, I've sort of tried my best to make this whole process as fast as we can but it's just not that fast now unfortunately as well the poor old 3d printer really does struggle when it's this cold struggles to heat up and struggles to stay warm and I seem to have to make sure that uh, I print at a bit of a slower speed for the filament. Um, otherwise, in this weather, it seems to, to not like it and start to get really caught up in the in the nozzle. But anywho, enough blabber. So this is what I'm talking about, guys. You can see we've got our spaces in there and then obviously double gaskets, which is going to obviously be a requirement for said setup. But um, if you come over here, hopefully it translates on camera pretty well. But if you look at the... 
um, alignment of where that alternator pulley is. Um, basically the water pump, like the belt, once it gets to the water pump is going to be pretty much back in this wiring and half off the actual eye of the pulley there. So that's why it's just not, not going to work. Um, which sucks. It really sucks. But hey, it's custom one-off cars. That's what happens. All right, guys. So it did take ages to print, but first iteration is looking good. Um, so that's essentially how it's going to be. And then there'll be a post off pretty much the bottom, as low down as we sort of can, without obviously the, it interfering with the balance or anything over here. And yeah, that post will have an idler and there'll be some webs off the post back to each bolt and then one probably straight off the top and that should hold it and that should be fine. So that gives us plenty of room off the crank support. We've got room to spare, uh, which is awesome. Unfortunately, it's as big as I can make the standoffs because of where they have to fit in that little gap there on the Joe Blow Speed Shop crank support, but um, that's going to work. So that's fine. Holds up, all the dimensions, everything's sweet. Uh, probably doesn't need to be that thick. I might, might thin it up a bit. But yeah, once it's made out of uh, a piece of billet alloy, we should be pretty right. And uh, that's gonna be the solution, which I should have just done from the start instead of wasting how much time I wasted trying to find another solution that was gonna work that was just bolt on. But anyway, it is what it is. Um, obviously we try our best to avoid doing this because it's just such a lengthy, lengthy process. But anyway, it is what it is. So I'll try and sort that out today once I get this a bit sorted, uh, a bit more sorted and get an idea of the offset a lot better. And I'll hopefully try and have this in the printer tonight so that we can have a final piece, hopefully tomorrow at some point and then start the CNC process. Start getting on the CNC, so stressful. Setting, yeah, getting close. So yeah, I've got to get this engine back together. We get this back together now that that's on its way and we know it's going to work and we know that our oil pump man isn't going to interfere with our timing points or anything else. I'm pretty happy to get this back together now and um, it's at a point where I'm happy to get the heads on. Heads are set up, all ready to go. Yeehaw. Looking awesome. Really keen for this thing. Super, super keen. So while I was sorting that out yesterday afternoon, the boys were trying to figure out or look into this about where, where we can actually mount this uh, Clearview filter setup. So um, in our head, we had hoped that the oil reservoir would be sort of up towards the firewall and run it through there. But obviously with uh, Rog whatever Rogan was doing, this is what worked best for, for what was there. So we're trying to figure out where we can fit our Clearview filter setup where it's gonna work. Uh, and the options was pretty much put it up on the firewall, move the fuel reg over and put the Clearview filter up on the firewall there, which would be probably a much easier solution for us to do. But because of the way the bonnet is, it'd be really hard to see through the sight glass, I reckon. And um, I reckon there'd always be glare with the angle you're trying to look at it. Plus it's um, just right back up there and you gotta try and run oil lines past pipes and just, we can put it at the front here. It's just going to be really tight and it's going to make changing the filter really hard and it's going to be a lot harder for us to build the solution and the mount to do it, but we believe it's going to be a lot nicer to put it up here. So that's where it's probably going to end up going, which is just going to be, it's going to suck, but it's it's much better. And uh, so that's where it's going to go. So yeah, try and keep all the oil stuff over there, all of the coolant and water stuff up here. Uh, so now that we've got this idea of a different water pump solution. Make this idler, we'll get the brackets for the block and just gonna put an external oil pump on it. Ah, water pump, I should say, water pump. So we were gonna put our interchiller pump up here in front of this engine mount somewhere. And I think we're probably just going to have to try and build a bracket where we can mount both the interchiller pump and the water pump over here underneath the AC compressor because it's really the only space we've got left to something, do that. Something we discovered this morning when we started looking at that. Yep. This is really fucking sucky because that's like the mounting points are offset and weird. Yes. Yep. This is not clockable. Oh, cool. Because of this, that's that's a snap ring that holds it in and that's a locating lug. Yep. So that's what you have to work with and I can't find a scene. There's no fucking orientation that's nice. Yep. But and then we're gonna try and fit another water pump in there somewhere as yeah, well. No matter what way you turn that either, that's pointing at something, that's pointing at something or the plug's pointing at something. Like yeah, it's just, I think I actually, yeah, like you try and you try and put something like that, uh, but then the bottom one's pointing straight at the sway bar, and like anywhere you try and put it, you know, the plug's pointing at the chassis, or like trying to put it somewhere down the bottom, underneath like that was pretty much the best option I could see is to somewhere under there. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure when I was looking at it, I was I was looking at putting it further up towards the engine mount and on its side, and the plug was pretty much pointing at the something like that. Yeah, know? something like that is what I was looking at before yeah. I lent back to Rogan. Um, and yeah, then, it, I was the same thing where either yeah. way it was going to suck somehow. And then you got to make some sort of angle bracket 
mm. or I looked at like something something like that so that it's sort of pointing that way but then look at your mounting points like they're all like yeah. it's, it's just no fucking nice way to do it there really isn't and this must have been developed for a specific bracket for them to have offset like mounting points why they wouldn't be just flush to make I'd have to game. double check with uh, forced induction but I'm pretty sure they're like a Mercedes yeah right electric Pierbo. pump yeah, Mercedes or something. I'm pretty sure. Probably, I could be yeah, wrong. That's but. probably an external water pump. Just heat him up and get. Can we get another one of these? <laughs> yeah, that'll be our water pump. Yeah, one with AN16 fittings and. So I'm pretty sure these are PWM of all. That'd be perfect. That would be perfect. So maybe we will do that because then we can just make two mounts. And... You can. Yeah, yeah. I remember because I'm pretty sure in the instructions it just says that it set the PWM to 100. percent Just run it flat out. Yep. So I'm pretty sure these are PWM capable, which would work with the Haltech pretty nice. It would be nice. Anyway, all solutions that we've got to come up with. But um, yeah, just custom cars, man. Uh, obviously, a lot of people do dry sump big engines, but not a lot of them are in street cars. <laughs> Where AC. Right, and trying to, yeah, trying to run AC alternator. It's like, um, yeah, a lot of people, you know, you'd think j just a dry sump LS supercharger, it'd be really easy just to get off the shelf stuff. But, you know, most people that are running dry sump LSs are running engine plates, so they don't have engine mounts and stuff to deal with. Most of them are trying to run AC, so they don't have all these accessories they have to deal with. <laughs> um, so, you know, most of them, you can just chuck an electric water pump on. You don't have to deal with all this stuff, but because of uh, the accessories are trying to run, you can't do that. And trying to dry sump this with stuff that's not, yeah, anyway, just, yeah, it's crazy to think even, even in the aftermarket scene of LSs where it, it seems almost just unfathomable how much aftermarket support there is, we are still here having to custom make one-off parts to make this setup work. So anyway, that's custom building cars. Right, oh guys, we've got a new electric water pump on the way, Davies Craig one. Um, yeah, we're just ticking along, cracking along. Boys are working on the power steering lines at the moment. Um, they did finish the mount for the uh, Clearview filter system and that mounts up. Did manage to get it up next to the radiator where it's gonna be just a lot nicer and easier to see. So we are very glad we ended up going through the trouble of doing that. Um, it is a much nicer place to put it, uh, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, that's what's going on at the moment. We're keeping on cracking along with this. So pretty much just been trying this morning with the obvious, the, the changes to the water system that are, that are gonna happen, uh, as well as we are changing what we were gonna do as far as the breather system a little bit. So it's been ch chasing up the things that are changing, trying to make sure we've got everything on the way that we need to get on the way because yeah hopefully by the end of next week we're pretty well ready to get this thing on there and you know it doesn't look like it at the moment but once this engine's in there and everything starts going together it should start going real quick but um yeah anyway that's what we're working with and so what we're doing so because it's friday we'll try and get all the ordering done as much as we can and get across all of that as best we can so that everything's on the way over the weekend and then um yeah, I can work through the weekend with actual labor work, which I rather do anyway, because people don't annoy you so much. <laughs> Just trying to do like putting engines together and stuff on weekdays while the phone doesn't stop ringing and people don't stop rocking up. It's uh, frustrating. It's a lot easier to do it on a Saturday where you can chuck your headphones in, no one annoys you and just smack through it. Yeah, so all right. So the next thing I need to do is find out what this is and get a part number for that and get another one because that's what's going to go in our water pump. Oh, I'd love What? What it is. You're you joking. Just, you could have just asked. <laughs> you really know your stuff. I don't care what they say about you. I reckon you're pretty smart. <laughs> Expert. <laughs> All right, adding some fixtures to fix the power steering lines and uh, make everything really nice and neat and tidy. Trans transcooler and power steering. Ooh, transcooler as well. So that comes out to here. Very nice, very cool and good. Very groovy. No, zi no zip ties. <laughs> Nil. Neil Zippies. Righto guys, I meant to film this the other day, but I was too busy with everything else. There's so much other stuff going on that I, I just couldn't. But we've got our drive stuff from Former Tulsa, which is awesome. They did send us the wrong guide, guide washers, but that's right, they got the new ones on the way. So essentially what they did, they sent us a spacer for our drive, as well as obviously our drive gear. And what we do is we use the spacer, cut it down, mill it down to whatever you need, get it in a lathe and cut it down to get the spacing of the gear right. Obviously you have your guide washers on either side of your gear, and then you cut the excess off the mandrel and then use the end cap, boom, bolts on, happy days. So um, we should, that all should work 
given our room. Um, we should be able to basically make it as short as we can and have the drive as close to the end of the blower drive as we can, essentially. So we don't want it too far offset there. That's how that's gonna work. So then the gear for the pump, I'm explaining this to you guys because I've never actually dealt with this sort of stuff. So I'm sort of learning as this stuff arrives. So that goes onto the pump uh, and it has scrub screws. Uh, so it just locks onto the shaft on the drive of the pump, uh, which means that it can sort of just be set anywhere along the pump drive and locked up, which is, that makes sense and that's awesome. So I, in an ideal world, what we want to do is try and put this almost as far to the front or to the end of the pump drive as we could in order to set everything back from the radiator as far as we can on the pump side. Now we could do that as in, once I get this set and have my all my measurements right for the offsets, uh, I could modify our pump mount and shorten it if I want to to move the pump back because we've got heaps of room back to the engine mount. We're not there's nothing in the engine mount that's sort of in the way. The pump can be moved back, and that's not a problem. However, now that we have to incorporate an idler pulley into the pump mount, that is not as simple because I can't go just moving the pump back because now there is an idler pulley for the belt in the pump bracket. So that they, it's just. Nothing's that simple. It's just everything is just a compiling big heap of piling problems that I have to solve. Um, so yeah, because I need this idler right in the center of the pump bracket, I need it to be the right offset for the six rib belt, which means I can't just go moving the pump back because it'll move the idler back and then we'll end up with the idler that's not positioned correctly for the belt route. So, yeah, here we are. <laughs> custom stuff on an LS, but you know, to try and put dry sump set up this much power in a rack and pinion car in this combination of things, as well as this being a street car and trying to have air conditioning and, and everything else. Um, yeah, it's a pretty unique combination of things, I suppose. Either way, a lot of work and a lot of problems to solve. Anyway, we're on the way, but that's how the dry sump setup works and how it all drives. Um, we just got to try and figure out how we're going to set this well, I guess we're not really have to figure out. We sort of pretty much have to set it wherever our idler's gonna be right and hope that uh, there's enough room from the pump to the radiator that it's gonna work that way.